What's up guys, welcome back. As you can see behind me, I've painted the back wall of the new shop here in Chattanooga. I only have one coat on it. People say pro tip, but amateur tip from me, don't ever roller paint cinder blocks. It takes forever and you don't get into all the nooks and crannies. I didn't spray applicate that paint simply because I didn't want to mask and like tarp off everything here in the shop. Well, I should have because spray applying that would have been the way to go, but I didn't. And now I'm just okay with it being one coat and like thin and kind of a distressed look. But the back wall's black. And we got three more walls to do with obviously lots of stuff in the way, but I'm stoked on the back wall. That way I can start putting furnishings against the back wall and continue setting up the shop. As you can see, the 700 Corvair and the Century are all in here. Uh, I went down to Georgia last week and finally picked up some uh, pallet racking for shelving units. Um, I got three uprights. Luckily, the guy included one for free, which is great. And I got eight crossbars. So these are 34 inches deep. I didn't really want 36. Uh, I was kind of hoping for just like a 24 deep because what I want to do is my bottom shelf, I want to use as a workbench. And I want to go up high enough to slide my toolbox in underneath um, and have ultimately an eight foot wide workbench for the bottom shelf and then two more shelves up above it. So the guy threw in uh, a third rack, that a uh, third upright that I might justify cutting off at like three feet high or however high my workbench height will be and making an extension. So I've got ultimately 16 feet worth of bench top workbench type space. So I haven't decided that yet. What I've already started doing is cutting them down to height to fit in here because these are 12 foot uprights and my space from floor to the bottom of the trusses is about 11.6. So I've cut these down to about 135 inches, um, which will get me underneath the truss, but it allows me to keep one of the, the upper crossbars. I basically cut it off at the crossbar um, so I wouldn't have to cut that out and re-weld it. Uh, that height will work just fine. So that's what I've been working on there. Been working on a ton of laser engraving jobs. I've been trying so hard to get caught back up on that. My uncle Tim was headed to Oklahoma from New Hampshire with an empty trailer to go pick up his daughter, my cousin's car and all of her stuff because they're moving her back to New Hampshire. And so rather than drive all the way to Oklahoma empty, he was willing to come all the way out here with my 1981 German market 635 CSI car. And if you guys have been on the channel for a little bit, you saw a couple episodes where I went and got that car that had been sitting for 23 years uh, full Euro spec car, M90, dogleg gearbox, um, CSI car, really special car. So I'm happy to have that here in Chattanooga now. Haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with that car. I might sell it. I know in the first episode I talked about parting it out. It was before I knew how special that car really was as far as the drivetrain is concerned. But I might still do that. I might still sell that car to somebody who wants to build a pre-M6 CSI car or put that drivetrain in something of the year, you know, if they want to put it in a five series or something really cool. I'm coming to grips with that. I do not have the time anytime in the near future to get after that project. And the honest truth is the floors are rotted out. Some of the inner structural parts of the car are, are rotted. Um, the body's in rough shape. So as of right now, that body is basically covered rolling storage for the drivetrain as far as I'm concerned. But what this episode's all about, and I'm sure by the thumbnail I've chosen, you guys already know what this is about. My van uh, is sold. My friend John is flying in from Virginia this Saturday. As I'm recording this, it's Wednesday, so in just a few days, he's coming in to pick the van up and drive that back to Virginia. I kind of shot myself in the foot there. I made mention in one of the last episodes that I was thinking of selling the van. John hit me up. Now the scramble was on to find not just a vehicle I could daily drive, but something I could hopefully move my trailer around with if I needed to. So it's been pouring rain here the last like four or five days straight. And I did go look at a few different vehicles. I drove an hour each way a couple different times to go look at some trucks that were, weren't really advertised as they are. And they were kind of a waste of time, unfortunately. So I was feeling pretty defeated knowing that the van was gone on Saturday. I started looking for just daily driver, just a car that I could get in and drive. So I had something come this weekend. So I finally found something. It's something I was super excited about. It fits right up my normal alley for the type of stuff that I like. 
because um, I wasn't looking for just some fifth gen Honda Accord, which would have done just fine for a daily driver, something reliable, something cheap, uh, something cheap to maintain. Um, but I found a vehicle that I was super, super excited about. And my friend Logan Barnes, huge thanks to Logan for giving me a ride two hours up into Northern Tennessee to go look at this vehicle. Well, we just got back. I pulled the trigger, purchased the car, just made it back without any issues. A car that I'm oddly really, really excited to own. Probably one of my favorite cars I've ever bought. This is a 1987 Dodge Diplomat. It was their luxury car for sure. Uh, it is branded a Dodge Diplomat, but as you can see, they, they really endorsed the Chrysler uh, branding of the car because it was one of their luxury cars. What's really cool about this particular Dodge Diplomat is it's a one owner with 28,000 original miles on it. A 94, 95 year old woman bought a brand new 1987 and just up until about two years ago was driving it, as you guessed it, to the grocery store in a church kept it in a carport or in her garage its whole life. So it didn't even get burnt out front by the sun. The dash doesn't have any cracks in it. The paint really looks like it's still in great shape. Doesn't look like it's been washed in probably 10 or 15 years or vacuumed out. So it is super filthy right now. But I think this thing is going to clean up unbelievably. It looks like it's all original paint. I think some of the bumper extension pieces here have been painted. I think the rear one Looks like it may have been painted, or maybe whatever it's made out of, just didn't prep well and, and the, the paint has just faded over the years. But the rest of the car looks like it's all original paint. The headliner, as most typical like 1980s American cars, had that real thin fabric headliner. So that's all kind of pulled down. So I'll have to figure something out to like glue that back up. But the rest of the interior is amazing. So the 318 was Mopar's equivalent to the GM small block Chevy, uh, the 350. And it was a tried and true motor. I mean, they put that motor in their trucks and their cars and uh, that's what this has in it. And I kind of knew what I was getting into with this. Uh, luckily, because the car hadn't sat, that was, the, that was the key component about going to look at this car was, you know, most cars from the 80s that only have 28,000 original miles on them have definitely sat for years and years. Therefore, probably needing a lot of service to put back on the road again. So the remainder of this episode is gonna be basically cleaning it up. Just pressure washing the car is really gonna make a world of difference. So that's what I'll probably do tomorrow. Yeah, the interior needs a ton of cleaning. But how cool is this bench seat? Fold down armrest. Get your girl to sit right in the middle. It's like your pickup truck. Column shift Mopar. Man, this, this era of American luxury cars was so cool. Yeah, this interior is so cool. It's my favorite part of the car. Everything needs to be cleaned up. There's no cracks in the dash. I mean, look at this. All right, guys, it's the next morning uh, and I'm going to start detailing the car. Um, maybe not really detailing, but I'm gonna pressure wash it and I'm gonna clean up the interior. Um, as I said yesterday, I mean, look at this. I mean, who knows when the car was washed last. I was teasing my buddy Aiden Templin from Virginia about coming down to actually paint correct this car. Uh, he does a lot of car detailing, a lot of transformation videos on YouTube. Um, unfortunately, he's not super close by, but um, it would be awesome to have him film a paint correction on this car for his YouTube channel. Uh, it's gonna look amazing once it's all done, I think. This car really is rust free. I mean, it's incredibly clean and straight. I haven't been able to find a rust blister anywhere on this car. I mean, not even underneath any of like the little window seals where all the trim are, you know, anywhere up in the Northeast, regardless of raw or anything. Um, there'll be little blisters started here and there where, where moisture sits and collects. I mean, all along the back window trim, there's no blisters anywhere. See, that's not even a paint chip. Man, I'm excited to clean this thing up, so. Get everything pulled out let's go i love all of these 1980s like mopar switches and gauges all this stuff is so cool like the little wiper arm here
Interior is pretty filthy. Just hasn't been vacuumed or cleaned out. Seats are all filthy. Well, she's washed and it looks 100% better. I mean, it's 75 to 80% better. Um, really needed a wash. And obviously, you don't want to use a bristle brush on paint, but this car hadn't been washed in so long that it really needed to be aggressive, aggressively scrubbed. Um, I do plan on doing some sort of paint correction on it, clay barring it. If, if I don't do that, I want someone who's really good at it to do it. Um, so using a brush on this paint to really get years of not washing it off the car. I don't think it's really going to hurt anything much. Washing it made all the difference. I mean, it actually looks like a nice car now. All right, it's in the shop. I did end up cleaning it up before finishing this video up. It looks so much better than it did before. And I figured I'd give you guys one quick look at the interior uh, before the end of the video. I want to look this thing over mechanically and make sure it's ready for daily duties. I just checked fluids before driving the two hour drive home yesterday. So I know it's got oil in it. I know it's got good coolant. Um, yeah, just going to kind of give the car once over and then continue detailing. And then maybe look at suspension options. It's a torsion bar front suspension setup and a leaf spring rear with a solid axle. And being a unibody car, that leaf spring setup's real bizarre because it's got like this weird shackle mount that mounts to the body goes up into the body of the car in the front. The rear is a normal drop down shackle for the leaf spring. The Century is significantly longer than the Diplomat, but when it's aired out, it looks significantly smaller, which is pretty crazy. Because the Century is way heavier and way bigger. It's crazy what height will do. But what else is really cool about the Diplomat, and I mean really cool, is its bolt pattern. Its PCD is five and 114.3. And since I already want to lower it, the Work VSX9s might make a, uh, a test fit wheel on this car to see like what widths and even diameters will work it'd be really cool to do like 14s or 15s on the diplomat and do like a shakotan style car but it would really it'd really kind of be annoying for a daily driver having a small tire on that car but these are 18s the work vsx9 so i might test fit them on on the uh, diplomat just to see what widths i can get away with because these fenders stick out so far and if i didn't go super super low where i was tucking a lot of wheel could probably fit a really aggressively wide wheel on this car and make it look real mean it probably will be a fun daily mild project and then sell it to one of you guys uh, moving on down the road it's a really cool car thanks again for watching guys and i'll see you in the next episode